a fantastic finals we have on our hands at the playoffs of the Tata Steel Masters 2024. We have Gukesh taking on Wei Yi. And this is going to be an exciting three minutes plus two seconds, two games to be played. And Wei Yi has beaten with it today. Then Nodir back in the semi finals and now takes on Gukesh. While Gukesh has managed to get the better of Parham Maksudlu in the final classical game and then Anish Giri. We have the Queen's Gambit decline on the board. What is going to happen? We have the Ragozin and Queen B3 line played by Gukesh. Very interesting choice by him. A5 played by Wei. C5 is the main move, but Bishop comes out to G5. And now there's pressure on the center. There's a pin here. There's a pin here. So already quite a complex position building up. Wei, cool, calm, collected. What is he going to do next? He plays his pawn to c6. This kind of gives white a small little advantage to play with. e3 is a nice move, opening up the bishop to come out. He plays h6. You can take on f6. That's a very, very viable move. But Gukesh keeps up the pressure, puts his bishop on h4. And way he brings his knight to d7. And Gukesh now plays his pawn to a3 asking a question to the bishop the bishop comes back so in effect we do have the queen's gambit decline now with uh, some additional moves like a3 a5 and all of that which has happened <coughs> black has castled and now for white maybe the most logical move is to play bishop d3 no he takes on d5 now taking means that if you play ed then i can go bishop d3 which is a normal way to play but black should try and play knight d5 so that after bishop e7, there's queen e7, some trades happen. But Gukesh avoids the trade, plays bishop g3. And maybe a good idea now is to take on c3. This seems like a fantastic uh, thing. Yeah, takes. And if you take with the queen, there's already c5. So that's the reason why he takes pawn takes c3. And now pawn comes up to b5. And now bishop comes to d3, bishop a6. So the black bishop's problem seems to be resolved now with c5 coming in. Although the b5 pawn does seem a bit weak. So if I go rook fb1, it's possible. But he goes rook fd1. Somehow I feel that way he has managed to solve all his opening problems. He can put his queen now on uh, the b6 square is exactly what he's done. But Gukesh can go rook a b1 and try to take advantage of this b file pressure. This game is heating up for sure. What is Gukesh going to play next? He has 2 minutes 30 seconds. Way he has 1 minute 57 seconds. Gukesh taking his time and now plays queen e2. It is clear that the pressure on b5 can become quite nasty after rook b1. So way he must take care of this. And I think he already has a plan in his head. Which is his bishop is well defended for the time being. So he can play b4 and that's exactly what he does. Nice move there. Because with this he's actually solving all his problems. The bishop on g3 is nice, but not doing much. Take on a6. I think queen takes makes sense. But then somehow after, if you take queen takes, queen takes, rook takes, there's dc5 followed by taking on b4. And that's the reason why he plays here rook takes. Nice move there by Wei. And his, his point of course is that after I take dc5 now, there's knight c5. And if cb4, then I have ab a b but in case you try to interpose this with a b a b the knight still defends the rook here so uh, these are some small little calculations that way he has done to take with the rook and now gukesh is trying to see if c b4 is better a b4 is better d take c5 is better you know there are so many possibilities and he's unable to wrap his mind around which one to play he takes on b4 pawn takes by way and now 
black has these two strong pawns of course you want to create a strong center but after a4 the black pawns look much stronger than your pawn your own pawns here as white so that's the reason why gukesh goes safe takes on b4 bishop takes and with the a passer it does seem that black is the one who has some chances rook comes to a8 Gukesh plays this tricky move, knight e1. He wants to go knight d3, maybe put pressure on b4 and c5. Like how he is playing this. He goes queen d3, queen c6. And the rook comes to the c1 square. In effect, white's position does look more uh, harmonious. But black has the more possibilities. Now knight d3. Just put your bishop back on f8. And then push your pawn from a4 to a3. Well he plays bishop d6. And I'm not a big fan of this move. Because after this trade. Gukesh gets his knight to this square on c5. So takes. Queen takes. And. What is Gukesh playing, going to play next? I think knight c5 makes sense here. But there's also queen b2, queen c2, trying to get in with the queen. He plays his knight. And we plays his rook to c6. So the knight is now attacked three times. And Gukesh plays his queen to b5, defending the knight, attacking the pawn on a5. And way he has to be careful. He has a minute on the clock. Gukesh is down to 24 seconds. Queen goes back to c7. And now the a5 pawn is defended. Are there some tactics with knight e6? No, there's a check coming down. So that's the reason why Gukesh takes away the back rank weakness. Which is a smart thing to do. And way now can take yes he takes on c5 rook takes rook takes and maybe just pawn takes could be a better move than playing with the queen because queen takes he takes with the pawn yeah that that makes a lot of sense and we he plays rook b8 attacking the queen here gukesh plays his queen to a6 very important not to take queen takes a5 because after rook b1 it's black who wins so queen goes to a6 and we now with 36 seconds thinking gukesh has just seven seconds on the clock he takes the pawn on c5 gukesh now takes here check means the king can go up so the queen is no longer here he plays queen d6 check but g3 very safe and calm and solid and now the position is equal i think the players can agree to a draw here but it turns out that both of them want to continue playing the queen comes up pawn is pushed to f5 king g2 anything can happen here way playing queen e5 because when both players are down to their last 10 seconds there are mistakes prone to happen now gukesh has some thing to play for because there's a weakness on the e6 pawn it's not something spectacular but he goes h5 and he's playing this very interestingly trades the queens rook takes rook comes to c6 pushes his pawn to e5 king comes out and now rook d2 is a mistake rook c5 is actually giving white a big advantage but he goes rook e6 and misses that chance to win a pawn and with this I think the position is now quite drawish in nature. G5, but don't take on Passon. Rook E7, cutting the king on the last rank. Could be something to play for, but he takes. And a draw is agreed. So, very, very uh, equalish game. Both players played good chess. And I think none of them really had a chance. So, draw, which means we go to the second game. Now, we will have the white pieces. Both players arrange the board. And the arbiter changes the play cards now. Wei will be white. Gukesh will be black. Whoever wins this actually wins the Tata Steel Masters 2024. So a big, big game.
the start of game number two way he has the white pieces now takes his chair gukesh comes in as well puts the jacket on his chair and also his suit and is playing with his shirt where he has the waka and west bridge on it let's see what happens a decisive and an important game gukesh asks the arbiter to give him a second just so that he can adjust all his pieces puts all the pawns in one line and we are ready to go a shake of hands and off we go way he plays his knight out to f3 and gukesh takes his time is something wrong with his shirt ah he puts that band inside his shirt and we have the queen's gambit declined played here bishop comes out to b2 knight c6 slightly weird move by gukesh but that's how he managed to beat anish giri in the previous round so he is happy to try it out again by putting his knight on c6 by the way g3 not at all a great move because now the bishop can actually come to f5 or g4 he first castles bishop g2 and queen comes to e7 way he castles it out Gukesh plays his knight to e5. So black has equalized out of the opening without too much too many difficulties, but of course this game is much beyond just the opening stage. It's big fight coming in. He takes bishop takes. And now do you trade the bishop? Do you play d4? Do you play bishop a3 hitting the queen? Many many options here for way he takes. queen takes and now the rook is hanging here yeah you can push your pawn to d4 but i think white doesn't want to do that he plays his knight to c3 keeping up the pressure on the d5 pawn and i think gukesh's next move is pretty straightforward he can play his pawn to c6 although it is tempting to even try d4 here just to push the pawn but i don't think gukesh is going to do that he plays his pawn up to c6 and now we thinking for a bit pushes his pawn to d4 b4 sorry not he's going for the minority attack will gukesh play for the king side attack he plays it he plays h5 wow this is an exciting game now both players playing on different wings h3 by we so that if h4 is played by gukesh he can push his pawn to g4 that's his plan Gukesh being ultra focused on the board. The other idea always is to push the pawn to d4. This is what white black would want uh, because if pawn takes queen takes the d2 pawn would become a weakness. Bishop comes out to f5, which is a good move by Gukesh here, and way he has to decide what is his way going to be here. Not easy for white to actually come up with something. He pushes his pawn, but now bishop d3. is just winning material because cb5 you're winning a pawn no he doesn't play it he pushes his pawn to d4 which is also a good move take queen takes pawn takes pawn pawn takes pawn and now notice if you take bishop takes c6 you are in for some trouble rook c8 rook d8 putting pressure here also the h3 pawn is a bit loose so i don't think way is interested in taking that pawn instead he goes queen f3 and he's telling gukesh that if you take on d2 now i'm all ready to take on f5 if you take here i'll bring my rook and then take take this pawn the position is still equal there so i think gukesh is trying for more than just equality he can take on d2 but i think it makes sense to just drop the bishop back to g6 or to bring it forward to d3 many many options here But Gukesh has two minutes on the clock, while Wei has one minute fifty seconds. Both these players actually playing neck to neck. Not easy to determine who's the better player here. Bishop e six is also a fine move. Both sides have their weaknesses, but I like Black's chances slightly more than White, especially because the knight on f six is so stable. Also, h four is coming in at the right time, and Wei now. thinking he goes queen e3 trying to offer a trade the queen comes back attacking the h3 pawn and he goes king h2 h4 played by gukesh and way he takes it 
Whoa, the pawn structure is now actually compromised for white. But it's an extra pawn. How important is it? Queen g5 played, maybe making use of the open g file to give a checkmate there. Queen d6 check. And now the king has to move away. Or can you push your pawn to f4? No, he offers a queen trade. Bring the rook in. I think that's a fine move to make. Also taking here does not seem fine now because of rook d1 and then the c6 pawn is hanging. So that's the reason why now Gukesh thinks a bit. The most, the best objective move is to play rook d2. D, rook d8 so that the queens can get traded and then you can put pressure on d2. Will he be able to find it? Gukesh has 1 minute 20 seconds also away he has somewhere close to that time. So both players have the same amount of time. Rook a d8 good move there. Gukesh realizes that actually the pressure on d2 is good enough to compensate for the pawn. Wei defends his d pawn. He is playing very solidly here. Knight h5 to f4 is a plan for sure. But uh, Gukesh plays bishop c4. But this is not a great move because the rook anyway wants to go to g1 and put pressure here. So perhaps not the wisest decision there by Gukesh. Rook g1, good move. Way. Knight h5 by Gukesh. Queen takes queen. Rook takes. Yes, the position is equal for now. But will it remain equal? With both players playing on last minute on the clock, Gukesh has 59 seconds. Way he plays bishop f3, the knight comes back. And what's next? He goes rook g5. What a move. He wants to swing the rook over to c5 or a5. Way creating problems for Gukesh, which are not so easy to play when you have less than a minute. Meanwhile, Way also has 50 seconds on the clock. How does Gukesh continue? I think bishop d3 is one idea. There's rook d rook d8. He plays king f8. Still, everything's okay. Everything's under control. Way thinking there. And he plays rook to c5. Attacking the bishop and the pawn. Now the safest thing to do is to go back here. Give up another pawn. And bring your rook to d4. Attacking h4, bring the other rook in, attack here, and then that's still fine. But in reality, no one wants to give up more material. You know, another pawn falling through is not something that you like. So that's the reason why he goes bishop d5. But that would mean that now I can take on d5 and get rid of my knight, which is not so great for way. Knight takes, knight takes, and pawn comes up to d4. So at least... White has now an extra pawn, although black still has great compensation because white's extra pawn is this doubled edge pawn. Gukesh plays his rook to f6 and now rook d3 comes up. Knight jumps into b4, but actually it's not helping much. In fact, white can go to b3. He goes rook b3, attacks the knight. Maybe the knight has to come back or he can... Yeah, he comes back to d5. And you will see Wei improving his position now. H5 played. The pressure is growing. Whoever wins this will be the champion. So much at stake. He trades. And actually with this, Wei's double pawns are gone. G6 was not at all a good move. Knight E7. Bishop comes to E4. Stopping Knight F5 check. Rook comes to D6. But now there's Rook F3 check. Which is a powerful move. He goes Rook C4. Rook D8. Guke still has chances to hold this. Rook b4, defending. I like how Wei just keeps making normal moves without actually making any mistakes. And that is the secret of him. Playing so well in blitz. King f3, king comes up. King e3 played. And now rook h8, attack there. But he goes rook d7, slightly passive. Rook e6, rook p8, king d3. He goes rook d6. Both players moving back and forth. Check. Rook king's king comes back. Rook goes here. Whoa, what is going to happen next? Both players down to 10 seconds on the clock. Gukesh plays his rook here. Pawn to f3. And now white is slightly better. Check. King goes to b3. Gukesh needs to take care of his time. Knight e7. He pushes his edge pawn. And now knight comes up. King c3. Knight d6. He's attacked the rook and the pawn. Bishop takes c6 is a beautiful move played here. I think it was missed by Gukesh. Rook c5 and a check. 
But now the king comes back to d2 and it's all over. Gukesh has lost too much material. Rook a3, bishop comes back. Rook d7, but now there's h5 already or just rook c6, pinning the knight. The rook comes back and the bishop is played way, playing excellent chess. And now rook g8, Gukesh is losing the g6 pawn. King comes in. It's a totally winning position, but Gukesh is fighting. You never know what can happen. And this check comes in and this is where you lose the rook. And you can see Gukesh very upset there. What a miss for him. He finishes second while Wei is the champion of the tournament. Fantastic play by the Chinese GM. The spectators are applauding, but Gukesh is in disbelief because he could have won the title of the tournament. And there you see him sitting there with his hand in his head. Well, there were many things that could have gone well for Gukesh here, especially his game against Pragnananda where he was winning, but that ended in a threefold repetition, sort of a photographic draw. But yeah, spare a thought for this young guy, 17 year old, very nearly winning the strong Tata Steel tournament. But... Gukesh showed what a fighter he is. After two losses against Ding and Anish, he actually came back and won game after game, game after game, and has managed to now raise his rating up to 2742. But that ends the tournament now. Wei is the champion. Gukesh finishes second. And that is a great result for the Indian youngster and also for the Chinese grandmaster.